Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. This is the part where I sing. Hey, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and I'm here until midnight tonight with the Ramble. Ladies and gentlemen, the dulcet tones of Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, uh... Just, uh, I'm just being grateful that I wasn't on that submersible. Yeah, well, I had a, I had a ticket uh, for it, and uh, we uh, we were ready to go, and then that. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty grand. <laughs> so I called them up afterwards, and I said, "Does that mean that our uh, our trip next week is is uh, is not available?" Yeah, you know that's our only submersible. But as soon as we build another one, we'll be happy to call. Well, you got to give the Titanic some credit. A hundred years later, they're still killing people. <laughs> well, I, Drudge, who is not my favorite place to go for information, did have a headline that read, Titanic claims another five victims. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was uh, good, you know. Well, I just read the guy that uh, he bought some, they did that thing was made with metal and carbon fiber and he bought the carbon fiber from an airplane factory that sold it to him cheap because it was aged and they didn't want to use it really yeah so that's probably why it popped and oh geez uh, you know i mean what happened is uh, uh, the reason it finally went is that as it as it would go along okay um uh, every time they would use it pressure was put on that hull yeah, and, and and as you're going up and down, that hull compresses and expands, and so it does that over and over and over, and then it's got to create some weaknesses, and that's probably what happened. It, they probably exactly. said, yeah. "I can't take another, I can't take another in and out on this thing." Blam, and these people are all, I, who knows what became of them? I mean, they're fish food of some sort. They say they found some flesh or something on the remains, you know. But, I mean, these people literally, I think they died instantly. I don't think they even knew what happened to them. Yeah, they said the only thing was there was a uh, a little buzzer that there was a problem. So they might have had an indication that they didn't have long to live. So, but yeah. they said that would be so quick, it would be like getting hit by an atom bomb. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just you, you, these people probably still don't know they're dead. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. Unless there's some thing up there, you know. Uh, you know, here's a here's a good question. Let, let's say let's say that we're wrong, okay? Uh, let's say there is let's not say a heaven, but there's another dimension that we go into, okay? Let's argue that for a second. I mean, let's accept that that may be may be one thing could possibly happen. All right? Who would you want to meet? Wow, that's a good question. Um... Because obviously everybody who ever lived is available to you. Now, you may have to go work on finding them, but they're there somewhere. Uh, maybe Mark Twain? Really? That's a good one. That's a good one. A lot yeah, of because in the history of uh, comedy, I think his is the only thing that stands up for time. Yeah, yeah, you're right. No, you're absolutely right. Um, but Mark Twain, that's a good one. That's a good one. Mine, and who would you pick? Uh, I, I, I've decided it's Clara Bow. The It Girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I was I've been watching documentaries on her lately, and I, in spite of the fact that my prostate is not in good working condition, I still kind of get a small stiffy. You know, <laughs> she probably was the sexiest woman ever in movies. But really? only because wow. she's my type. She she was from Brooklyn. She was short. She was cute. I mean, really, really adorably cute. All right? And the biggest star in the world at the time. I know you people say, when I said Clara Bow, went, who? And, so uh, she was in the 20s? 
She was in the 20s. She did silent films. Silent films, okay. And she made it into some talkies, but she hated talkies. She had a big fear of the microphone. In fact, she was known at one time, she started hitting a microphone so hard her hands started bleeding. Jesus. Uh, yeah, and, and it, she had real psychological problems at that point. Uh, about sound and so on, but and when it came to silent films, my God, you watch her in it, or you watch her in any of the films that she made, and you go, "That's a cute woman." And by the way, let me say that she was worried about the the microphone because she she came from Brooklyn. She had this very thick Brooklyn accent. Oh, okay. And she made sound films, and it was just fine. I mean, yeah, there's a little accent there. It was cute. You know, it's a Brooklyn kind of accent. You know, it's cute. And she was, she she had a good voice. She could sing. They had her sing in one of her films. You know, she had all the things she needed to make it in sound films. And she just couldn't personally take it. And finally, she married this, uh, this uh, cowboy actor. And they moved to, I think, Arizona, where he ran for Congress and became a congressman. And... She just kind of lived a very simple life there. And uh, eventually they split up because she was just, she always was a very unhappy person because she'd had a very unhappy childhood. But she was, she was a generous person, absolutely a generous person. And um, there's a, a great story about it. A kid who wrote her, he, she always read every one of her fan letters and she got maybe 10,000 a week. She read them all. Really? Yeah. Wow. And, and she got one from a kid who was down in Long Beach, down, out in you know Southern California, and he said, "I go to the uh, to the pier every every week to sell newspapers to support my family, and it would be a great help to me if you came down one day and sold them with me, because I would sell a lot of them." And all of a sudden, one day, she shows up at this kid's uh, kiosk and sells newspapers. <laughs> now, that's a nice person. That sounds like a great person, yeah. You know, that's a person who had humble beginnings and didn't forget them. You know, a lot of those people in Hollywood came from very humble beginnings, you know, poor families where they, I don't know, ate asbestos off the walls, you know, for dinner. Uh, I mean, really rough. And then they go to Hollywood, they become stars, and they forget that, that past. And she never did. And that and Hollywood hated hated her because she didn't have a she wasn't classy, you know. They considered her day classe, and it was terrible the way they treated her. Um, so but he was the first sex yeah, symbol of yeah. film. So I would like to meet her, and uh, 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 you know, after I die, meet her after I die, and uh, I have a couple a lot of questions I want to ask her, you know, and then I want to put the make on her, yeah. You know, <laughs> Well, I wonder if she encountered the casting couch, but oh, I'm sure she, I'm sure she did, and in fact, I think she did, and she kind of rejected it, you know. But they tried to say they tried to. She one time she invited the entire I don't know an entire football team over to her house for Sunday, you know, to have a party, and to have, let them use the pool and you know have a nice day because she was a fan of the team. And the rumor started that she then had sex with every member of the team on that occasion. And all she was doing was something nice, you know? So Hollywood, like, can, she just didn't have the, she, was, she wasn't, uh, you know, she had the Brooklyn accent and she wasn't a fancy schmancy person. And uh, she was just a down-to-earth human being and they hated her for that. So there's your, there's your, Clara Bow's story. I I love silent movies. I wish they'd bring them back. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, well, the silent movies. You know, look, silent movies were what they were for the time. And when that was all you had, that was the method you adapted to. In other words, you went to a silent movie and you enjoyed it. They were, they had adventure and they had action and they had romance and they had everything else and. You know, you walked out of the theater and you heard, a, 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 in many cases in New York, a full orchestra playing the music to the movie. You know, you had a really nice time. 
But then sound came in, and obviously sound had to happen, just like color had to happen. I mean, what, you're going to go on having silent movies? Of course, at that point, they thought silent movies were a stupid idea. You know, who wants to hear these people when they can see them and they, you know, everything's fine the way it is. And, and they, they rejected sound for a long time until finally the reason that sound was invented, you want to know the real reason sound was invented? It wasn't to have people talk. It was to have a full orchestra playing the music for uh, it, like they did in New York. Okay, if you go in, as I said, when if you go into a theater in New York, like the Roxy or whatever, there was a full orchestra in the pit playing to the movie. When you That's went, incredible. When you went out to the hinterlands, like Boise, Idaho, you had a guy with a piano or an organ. All right. So how do you get that same symphony orchestra everywhere in the United States? That's why they invented sound to put music on the, on a music track that would play with the film. They never thought of having anybody talk. And what happened was, is that they had Al Jolson in uh, The Jazz Singer uh, do a couple of numbers, you know, singing numbers in it. And just beforehand, he ad-libbed a few things. And they went, gee, we could use this for people talking too. And that's why it was the, that's why it was the first talkie. It wasn't the first sound picture. The first real sound picture that, M, that Warners had put out was a film with uh, John Barrymore called uh, Don Juan. And they had all the music, and then when they had a sword fight, you could hear the swords clanking. You know, it was for sound effects and music. And that's what they considered they were inventing it for. It was a cheap way of getting the symphony orchestra out to Boise, Idaho. So. Wow. And, uh, you know, uh, then finally it went, they went to sound, and everybody started making sound movies. And it was just like whatever happens, you know, I always often say that in the 50s why 3D died so fast is because they made every lousy movie they had on the books in 3D. The worst. You know, it wasn't until the very end that they started making a few films in 3D that were were big items, like Kiss Me Kate, the musical. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock's uh, uh, Dial M for Murder was in 3D. Uh, you know, they started to do good films in 3D, but by that time the fad was over with, and you know, that was it. All right. So well, that's. Uh, I wonder yeah. what you would probably know this. What was the first major picture in color? The first major picture in color was a picture called Becky Sharp. Really, I never heard of it. That was full Technicolor. And this would be mid 30s. Uh, Mid thirties, yeah. I think there may have been some shorts of stuff where they tested out the three color uh, uh, ver- stuff with, but the first actual color, three three color Technicolor. In other words, before they had had Technicolor, but they used uh, only two uh, uh, parts of the spectrum. I think they left um, uh, green out. Okay. So what you got was basically color based on just a red and blue combination. Uh, And there were some films like uh, Murders of the Wax Museum, uh, big film, was in in color like that. Uh, Fairbanks' The Black uh, Pirate was in uh, in two color Technicolor. Okay, I would have guessed like Gone with the Wind in 39 no. and oh, maybe no. Wiz- no. Wizard of Oz. No, it was Becky Sharp in that, and I think it was 1935, if I'm not mistaken. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, it, was, uh, it was an expensive process, and it was a very bulky process because they had to shoot three films to make up the color, and they had to be in this big, giant behemoth of a camera in order to do it. And uh, so it it really, for years, was a very expensive uh, process. And yeah, when you think about it, most of the films in the '40s are still black and white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you made a you made a musical in color. You did something that had, uh, you know, something had gone with the wind. You you had to do color. This was the big film, you know. But you know, black. And I'll tell you what bothers me is that we don't make more black and white films. 
love black and white. Well, the kind of photography that you did with black and white was amazing. I mean, there were some of the best photographers known to the business all yeah, did, yeah. The, did their work initially in black and white. There was a guy, uh, a cinematographer by the name of William Daniels. He worked in silent films. And he was the specified director of photography on any film that Garbo did. Because Garbo said nobody made her look better than William Daniels. And that's what cinematographers did. You know, they had a specialty. They were very good at something. Maybe they were good at landscapes or, or whatever. This guy was pretty good at Garbo's face. <laughs> you know, made her look gorgeous. So um, he, he went on later on to be the director of photography on Star Trek TV show. But, you know, that's how far down you can go. <laughs> uh, but William Daniels was, uh, you know, major. And, and there was a guy by the name of James Wong Howe. He was the only Asian really working in films for years. And he was an amazing cinematographer. The movies he does are just amazing. And I'm trying to remember who did Citizen Kane. There was a good cinematographer there, too. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the ability to do black and white and to make it just, how can I put it, just just, just radiate. Uh, you didn't need color. You know? No, black and white just set such a good mood. Well, I mean, some, some movies I would not make in black and white, but what happens is, we do things to the exclusion of everything else. I mean, the question is, once sound came in, should they maybe have gone and done some silent film still? You know, I mean, if, you, if you're going to make a movie with, uh, uh, with, with Buster Keaton, uh, he went over to MGM and he, had, he made some sound pictures. They did one terrible thing. They tried to team him, you know, in pictures with Jimmy Durante. Now, if you've been, those two are just not meant not to be in the, not even meant to show up in the same room together. Okay, I mean, Durante was terrific, but he wasn't, you know, putting him. Well, anyway, what they should have done with uh, with Keaton is they should have done what Chaplin kept doing. Chaplin kept making silent films for a while uh, because he said that's that's what people expect out of me. And people went to see his silent films. He didn't stop making silent films because, you know... I think his first silent film was The Great Dictator, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then, for the first time, The Little Tramp spoke, and it wasn't bad, you know. But, I mean, um, silent films should have allowed to continue to exist, but what we do is something become, comes in, like sound or whatever, and we do everything to the ex exclusion of that. And so they never made sound films, uh, silent films again. Till I, there was that novelty a few years ago that won the Academy Award, the artist that was silent. Um, you know, but, but there it was just a gimmick. You know, uh, and the same thing is true with color. Everything's in color. You go to a movie, it's in color. That's it. There's no no question about it. Um, so I think we've lost a lot of aesthetics. You know that we're great aesthetics. No, that's me. Well, you should be. You should teach film history. Nah, I don't. You know something? I don't know that as much about it as a lot of other people do. I mean, um, my friend Checky. You know, half the stuff I learned about silent about about film, I learned from Checky. You know, he was really? my he was my professor. Yeah, yeah. I, every, everything I learned, I learned from him. Uh, so, good. You know, terrific. But uh, we, 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 when we finally get certain kind of technology, we do everything to the exclusion of, of, the, of the old technology. And it's time that we kind of like, you know, um, we, say, hey, let, let's look at the past. Hey, this picture... It would probably be better in black and white than in color, you know. But we don't do that anymore. So, what the hell? I'm I'm old fashioned. Yeah. You know, when what I was, was the first, uh, what was the first color TV show? Wow. Well, that goes back to '53, I think, when they first, when RCA first introduced color, and they would do a 
occasional programs in color in order to promote it and try and get people to buy what few color TV sets were available out there. And I think they were something like 500 bucks a piece. And at that time, that was a lot of money. Okay. And as I remember it, the first color program, I never saw it in color because we didn't have a color TV set. I had a friend who had a color TV set. I'd go over and watch color TV on his set when occasionally they would do a show in color. And they were terrible. <laughs> and, and, it was, and it was called Producer Showcase. And that show was on every week in color. Uh, I think they did things. I think they did Peter Pan on Producer Showcase, I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. Um, the first version of Peter Pan's in black and white. The second version was in color. The next year that they did it. So uh, you, you had color sporadically during that time, and it was usually only on NBC. And then suddenly in about, I think it was 1963 maybe, um, I remember NBC saying all our shows are going to be color. And that year, all their shows were sent out in color. So people started swarming out to buy color TV sets. And then CBS said, well, we'll do color, nothing but color shows. And then ABC said it. And finally, uh, television was color. Mm -hmm. you, you, what? You can't turn on your TV set and get black and white unless you turn down the color. Yeah. In fact, this interview with uh, with Bubbles uh, is in black and white. In black and white. <laughs> you don't realize that. So we got we got to get you we got to get you somewhere. We, well, we, let's hope you get your uh, as soon as you get your uh, high speed internet. Okay. Uh, I'll let you know. I, I will send you a camera. Okay. In fact, I may even buy you a spank, brand spanking new camera because there's some very good ones that are very inexpensive. You just hook that in to your computer, and uh, then we can actually see. Well, People I'm can sure I wouldn't be able to, how to figure out how to do it. I'll, I'll walk you through it, okay? It's you no would problem. have to. You have a USB port in the back. You just click that in, and then you bring up uh, Zoom, and then you go, I'll just send you the right thing to click to get the camera, and you'll be amazed. There'll be a camera there. Okay. But now, you see, Bubbles doesn't want to do it because he figures he doesn't want to be seen. Nah. And yet this is a guy who, for his whole life, has gone on a stage, done his act, and wants to be seen. So I don't understand it. It makes no sense. No, to even me. doing my act, I didn't want to be seen. So. You, you wanted to turn your back to if the audience. If they could have darkened the stage, I would have performed that. <laughs> oh, you visually, you're a treat, really. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you have a very expressive face. Uh, you would have been very good in silent films, by the way. Really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would have loved that. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, you know, to me, the uh, the greatest silent film comedian of all time was Buster Keaton. There was nobody better. This guy did Who move. Literally, uh, it was amazing he wasn't killed, the stunts he did. Oh, he, amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. But uh, the thing is that, uh, you know, he never had an expression on his face. He didn't, no. <laughs> the he, thing that he does with that... Remember the frame of the house falls over him, and he, said, and he just looks both ways and goes, <laughs> "What happened here?" Yeah, and his comedy was based on that stoicism. He had one thing that he did, where he was on a, a rowboat, and for some reason it gets a hole in it, and it starts sinking. And as it's sinking, he's just looking at the camera with blank expression on his face. And then he suddenly realizes what's happening. And rather than his face doing it, he turns his head both ways like, oh, I'm sinking. <laughs> you know, and there was no expression. He did more with no expression on his yeah. face than any comedian could possibly do because he knew how to use his whole body. You know? Do you know, who amazing. you know who named him Buster? No. His parents were very, uh, they, were, they were in show business, and they were very close to Harry Houdini. And Houdini was over at the house one day, and the kid comes running down the stairs and then tumbles, hits the step wrong, tumbles down the stairs, and he was very good at, like, they, they could pick him up and throw him across the room and he would land on his feet, okay? He was very good at this, and he just tumbled, 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 and uh, 
uh, Houdini looked at him and went, boy, that's a buster. <laughs> it was kind of an expression for some kind of tumble or something in show business. And so from then on, he was Buster Keaton. Worked in his family's, uh, with his family's act, and they brought him on stage as a midget. And as an adult midget. They even put, like, mustaches on him and, you know, whatever. And uh, they would then do things like pick him up and just throw him into the scenery. And he would, he had was very <laughs> light. And that's where he learned all that tumbling, all that, those amazing things he was able to do. So, yeah. I, he, I, he must have been so arthritic in his last years. <laughs> yeah. Another guy I would like to meet. Another guy yeah, I would like that, to meet. That, that, he does have, like, the, the best deadpan face now, the, Alex, the Alex Bennett show in heaven is going to start Clara Bow and Buster Keaton <laughs> sounds good anyway it looks like we gotta go here gotta go and we'll talk to you next time my See friend Larry time, Bubbles Brown ladies and gentlemen now in its ninth year this is GabNet the great American broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, the bubs, the bubs, the bubs. Okay, let me let me lower my head here. I gotta see see my head is there. See, but I can bring it down here. There we go. All righty, and uh, bring it over just a little bit. There we go. Mm hmm. There we go. All right. Anyway, uh, just trying to do it so it looks good, folks. So it looks good. Uh. I, uh, oh, what does Josh Wheeler write me? Uh, thank you. They got it fixed. I'll jump on. Okay. Uh, Jeff uh, uh, Wheeler didn't think he was going to be able to make it tonight, but uh, he's going to be able to make it tonight. Okay. So let me, uh, let me bring in all these people here. All of them seem to look to be uh, normal and, and uh, uh, right and so on so all of them seem to look to be uh, normal and, and, uh, uh, okay uh, okay jeff 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 okay okay jeff 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 how's that yes jeff why don't you do that before you come on I do. <laughs> you're right you think you do but you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, yeah. That's okay. That's all right, Jeff. You know, we we understand. I'm getting that way myself, okay? So just, you know, just uh, you show me your whole face, too. You know, oh, yeah. We don't like the Kilroy is here look. Uh, yeah. yeah it was yep. here. Uh, anyway, that's Jeff, ladies and gentlemen, the guy. Oh, hey, guys. Let me, let me uh, bring, uh, I got to bring these people on here. There we go. Okay. There's Jeff uh, over there. That's Jeff, okay? Mm -hmm. And and that's Ray over there. And down there, uh, below me is Vernon Nunn. And over there, <coughs> kind of down here, i got to see how to do this. There we <laughs> go. That's, uh, that's uh, yeah. And uh, then uh, we got Charlie over there. That's yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. So, must be Alan over there. <laughs> must be Alan over there. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> anyway, so uh, how are y'all doing? Good. Yeah. Good. Tired. Yeah. Week. See, and then once I sink into the seat here, I need to take this thing and move it up. Okay. So you see there. There we go. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so how? Are you, so you're all doing okay tonight? Oh yeah. 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 It's so, Friday. It's Friday. It's weird being the same age as old people. I see. Okay. Yeah. Are you consider yourself old? Seventy three is pretty old. Yeah, eighty three is really old. <laughs> okay. So don't don't give me any any lip, you young punk. You know how old are you, uh, Alan? Uh, sixty four. Sixty four. Okay. See, he's even a younger punk than we Ray are. Ray is the youngster here. Yep. Ray is the youngster. Well, how old are you, Ray? 61. 61. 61. You don't look a day over 70. Is there You're anybody doing... here who isn't under 60? No, I guess not. I guess if um, if uh, Josh calls, he'll, I think he'd be the youngest yeah. one of all of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
but he's oldest in spirit, I think. He's an, he's an old soul. Yeah. So, anyway. So, anyway, I just, uh, you know, day I was watching all the news. The big news, you know, the big news is this, uh, the uh, move, the um, actor's strike, uh, yep. which I'm getting a little sick of because, uh, quite frankly, uh, so what if we don't get a bunch of bad TV shows and lousy movies, okay? Do we really care? All right. Uh, uh, I don't care. I got plenty of stuff to watch. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Plus, you know, here's my suggestion to all of you. Um, if the movie industry doesn't want to pay actors what they should get paid, and they don't want to go away with some of the uh, outlandish demands of the union, because there are some outlandish demands in, in the union proposal. See, I don't care about it because this is an actor's strike. It's not a radio or television strike. People say to me, well, gee, Alex, I mean, you're, union, you're part of that union. Don't you go on strike, too? No. Uh, do any of your local news people, are they going on strike? No. They're all, they're all sag after. Uh, why? Because this strike isn't about broadcasting. The only place where it is about broadcasting is in the shows that are on film or, or pre-taped, Okay. Uh, things that are on like Netflix and so on and so forth. But when it comes to your local newscast, they don't care. When it comes to the people who do radio who are represented by that union, uh, they don't care, you know. And quite frankly, they don't care for the 80,000 actors in this country who don't work, yeah. okay? Uh, because other, they don't give them, they don't give them uh, the... Um, uh, uh, you know, the insurance, the medical insurance they should get. And they're never out there uh, fighting to get more people working. Okay. But I looked up the statistic tonight. 80% of all actors are not working. Okay. And probably most of them are members of the union. You're a member of the union, aren't you, Ray? I sure am, and I'm not working right now. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, uh, I, I I don't work much. <laughs> you don't. You don't work much, right? No. So, so what I, are, you know, maybe once a year I get I I, I get a, a SAG thing. Yeah. So what are they doing to get more people working? You know, they do nothing. Yeah. None of the performing unions do anything to get people working. None yeah. of them. Well, you know, they kind. Of, it, it's kind of if you think of it in terms of unions let's see if this is actually what the he says he is here if this really is Bree uh, let's see here Bree is that you Bree is that you I don't think it is going to be I think that it's uh, not Bree okay mm-hmm well no see it Bree's audio Bree can we hear you no, Please you... give me one moment to well, get isn't... everything. That's okay. not, that's not. I just brief. need a few moments. No. Please go ahead. Sounds like him. You... Yeah, you can hardly Please. wait to get the porn on, right? Phony where, Bree. Where are, you, where are you located at, Bree? Please give me a few moments. Where are to get everything? Where are you, Bree? You're not going to get any pictures on here. Oh, there. Wait a minute. That is, that is Bree. Yeah. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I have to check this out because one time somebody actually ran a video. Is that you, Bree? It's me. Can you see me okay. or not? Okay, that is Bree. The son of a yeah, bitch. We can see you. Son of a bitch. Okay. Well, you know, lately we have people who say they're other people and then they're not. You know, and so on. Okay. So I'm with great trepidation now. I'm putting. There's Bree. Where are you, Bree? I'm in Pittsburgh. You're, oh, you're in the U.S. Oh, okay. What happened? Did they yeah, throw you? To, did they throw you out of uh, Indonesia or wherever you were? I was actually just in Germany, in Leipzig and Dresden. Oh, really? What, um, were, what were you doing there? Uh, oh, well, it's a long story. But um, in high school, I put I I was an exchange student. Mm -hmm. And I put my name in the back of a magazine. Mm -hmm. It was a music magazine. It had yeah. Nana 99 Red Balloons on the front. 
Right. Um, over a period of three months, I received over 42,000 letters from all over Europe and the world. And from that, I managed to have about 100 pen pals. So I was visiting a pen pal that I visited 33 years ago after the wall came down and uh, her and her mother and father. And uh, so I was visiting them after 33 years to see the changes in Dresden since the war, oh, okay. uh, since the wall came down. And what are that, that was that East Germany at the time? It was, uh-huh. yeah. So and and I have a lot of interesting stories from that time. What kind of changes? It's got to be. Well, the big one, the mm-hmm. big one is most people probably remember the Frauenkirche, the the church that was bombed during the war, mm-hmm. and the East German government, uh, uh, and of course the Russians, left it like that. Uh, they wanted it as a remembrance and a reminder of what the West had done. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, 33 years ago when the wall fell, uh, they didn't immediately start to rebuild, but in 2004, 2005, they rebuilt it. And my uh, pen pal's mother was an official state photographer, so she showed me the reconstruction. Mm-hmm. And my pen pal to- told me she felt a renewed sense of uh, belonging to the city of Dresden since it's been rebuilt. Oh, okay. So you had a nice time, did you? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And I was working on a project in Leipzig um, yeah. with some uh, colleagues from around the world. Yeah. Well, we have um, Phil here who it coincidentally was responsible for the bombing of that church. Uh, <laughs> hey, I, I, I thought I'd see a bunch of you union scabs on the show tonight. <laughs> you know, uh, how does it feel to tranche on your brother uh, union members? No. You know, oh, they don't count. They're they're not broadcasters. No, no, they're no, no. That's brother not what, members. Wait, that's not what I'm saying. I know it's, but you know, <laughs> what I'm saying I, is, if, 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 well, I think it's time that after a quit sag and go back to being its own union again, because yeah. obviously we're not getting the representation we should have nor do they care about us as much as they care about a guy, you know, who's acting. And who's acting? Uh, The people that they want to uh, help with all of this are the uh, actors uh, in the, in movies, because they don't, they're afraid of AI and making people look like people they aren't and so on, but who does that apply to? Tom Cruise cares about that, but Ray doesn't, (laughs) you know? I mean, right. it, it's it's uh, it, it's in a very it's an elitist union, okay, and it needs to be less elitist. I mean, unions to me were tough ass organizations. My father was a member of the musicians' union. There was mm-hmm. no tougher union out there for talent. They would take those violins and they'd rack them over those old ladies' right, uh, right. heads, you know, left and right. How would you like it if your trumpets didn't play anymore? Yeah, you know. but I mean, it, it, but th- but this is such an elitist union, you know. Uh, they and it, it, at any time when I used to try and I'd go to like an after meeting, for instance, and I'd say, you know, this is a union, and we're all union workers, and we're laborers just like any other. And they, oh, we're not laborers. I mean, no, that was their attitude. We're, going we're to, not laborers. Uh, wasn't everybody called Bill? And, uh, you know, you would say, uh, you know, I'm, I, I, my name's Alex and I'm an alcoholic. Wait, oh, you know, isn't that the meeting you went to? No, no, no. That's, that's not the meeting I went to. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, I just, I just, I just find it. I mean, do you agree with me, Ray? Am I wrong about this? And, uh, you know? No, I completely agree with you, Alex. And, that, uh, and that's. They a, do not. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. They do nothing. They do nothing for the uh, the journeyman actor, as it were. Um, they they've done nothing to try to get business back in the Bay Area when it disappeared twenty five years ago. Yeah, they don't care about. All they care about is Hollywood and the big names. Right, right. That's it. I thought unions were there to collect the dues. You know, and, and so I don't pay. I don't pay. I, I don't pay dues anymore. 
No, I'm a se- I am a help. senior member, and at a certain age, they don't charge you dues any longer. Yeah. That's how mm-hmm. long I've probably been a member of, of, of SAG after longer than uh, Fran Drescher. Now, when when you I remember you joining the union as a signatory. You were living in Sausalito. Well, that was as a signatory. My company was a signatory. Yeah, yeah. I, I you know I remember you know that uh, the conversation. Yeah, but uh, but no, I go I go back to Chicago. 1967, maybe 1966, huh. around there that I first uh, joined SAG, uh, joined uh, AFTRA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I guess how many years is that? You know, a long time. And when did the when did the when did the nanny when did the nanny go on the air? You know? Oh, that was like the my mother loved that show. She, oh, that's what I they, would say she's been up, she was on a while. Not, you know, as long as been, not as long as I not as long as I I don't think she's had her after SAG after card as long as I have. I don't think so. No, she's not as old as that. How old is she? She's got. To, how old is she? Sixty. Eh, she's an old bag. She's a, she, yeah. She looks terrible. Well, I mean, she didn't look as good as she looked when she was doing the show. Did she look good when she was doing the show? Yeah, I thought so. I thought she was a good looking gal. Yeah. You know, but when she opened her mouth, she sounded like Tony and took that took away all the sexiness. That's why I would have liked it. She was so cool. She had that accent. Well, I always loved that. I always, I always yeah. loved the accent. I just. Yeah. yeah, she she was entertaining. I think she was almost, I think she was raped Alex as a young child. I think she, I think she had a, an encounter. I couldn't remember saying this. I'm in an interview. And that's important to this conversation. How? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. But no. Fran is 65. She's 65. When did Spinal Tap come out? Write that uh, open because that's the first time I ever saw her in anything. Um, and she would have had to have joined SAG at that point. Well, if she's 65, I'm 69. That's four years. I was 13 in 67. Mm-hmm. So she was nine yeah. uh, in 67. Oh, somebody's yeah. not telling the truth about her age. Hmm. Oh, really? I don't know. That's what it says on you Google. Well, that, that makes sense. Uh, Alex just said that he joined in 67. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, how old would that have made her? Well, of course, nine? I belonged to other unions before that. I belonged to uh, IBEW, as I said last night, which represented broadcasters at small stations because they represented people who ran control boards, which in the early days I did, you know. So how long are you here for, Bree? Um, I'm only here for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I apologize for my internet. There was a major storm here yesterday Mm -hmm. and they're expecting another one tonight. And Mm -hmm. um, the repair guys, have been out in the neighborhood most of the day. So Pennsylvania. Well, what we're having yeah. right now here is we're having a thunderstorm. Uh, it was bad uh, over here. Yes. Oh, this morning? You probably, it, woke, it woke me up. It the woke dogs me are up. walking and scared of me. Yeah. <clears throat> I think you know you why you're having that weather? It's because you cross the picket line. That's why. <laughs> I never cross a picket line, okay? I only crossed a picket line once in my life, and it was go to go and screw the company they were picketing against, okay? So it was time time life, and I had to go there because we had this whole thing with Midnight Blue and having to have a discussion with the, the mucky mucks with my lawyer. And I they, they said, oh, you're not, don't cross the picket line. And we said, we're going up there to screw them, okay? And they went, Did oh, Henry okay, Luce go right that? ahead. And they all applauded. Did <laughs> Henry Luce own no. that at that time? No, 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 yeah. he didn't. No. Uh, yeah, that was Phil trying to show don't. he knew Henry Luce owned uh, time. Uh, no, I actually named my second daughter uh, after his granddaughter. Bitch? <laughs> no. <laughs> I am going to kill the video and my microphone while I eat, but I'm going to listen in. <laughs> Wait a minute. You, oh, go ahead, have? eat. We don't care. Yeah, it might add something. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so what you you're going back? Where are you going back to Malaysia? 
Um, no. Um, I'll be going back to Germany. Yeah. And then back to Dubai. And then back to Malaysia. Okay. Now, why why do you oh. travel like it would like to? Why do you go to Dubai? Because you worked there for a while. I used to work there, and I'm looking forward to seeing some friends. Oh, I see. So you're really seeing a lot of friends. Boy, is it it's it's thundering outside. It's almost a hundred yeah, degrees here. It's like ninety eight. We had that we had that last night, and hmm. um, it was you know this is a wonderful developing country. Uh, developing nation here what, because the, you have a storm come through hmm. power goes out internet goes out um, we have storms every other day in Malaysia I've never lost power I've never <laughs> lost the internet <laughs> uh, God I, I came bless America and, welcome to America uh, yeah I, I can give you so many examples of how America is not what you think I mean it's just unbelievable. Uh, did, I, did, I, did I ever exactly act like I believe I thought it was anything wonderful? Hey, Bree. <laughs> I think you knew. I think Brie, you knew. Alex. Just, just remember, yeah. during Mussolini's reign, the trains ran on time too. So mm -hmm. you know, things were really <laughs> no, good. No, but in Italy. here's the thing. Here's the thing. If people, uh, more people, left the United States to go just to, on holiday to go see another country and to be in another country for a little while they would mm -hmm. get to see that there are some countries that handle themselves much better than we do you know and um, and, and not in any perceptible way except that you know things are okay there you know things are not bad in England things are not bad in France things are not bad in, you know People who say America is the greatest country in the world. Well, you know, you haven't been to you haven't been to Spain. You haven't been to uh, Italy. You know, you haven't been to a lot of different places. Yes, uh, uh, Ray. Yeah, I just spent a month in Portugal, and that place is amazing. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, everything's fantastic. The people are so nice. Everything works. <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, I had no idea it was such a great country. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I found a lot of countries that if I were younger, I would be moving to right now, you know. Also, if I could speak the language better and do a radio show. Uh, they, 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 say Portugal, hmm? they say Portugal is a great place to retire for, you know. Uh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of American expats there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Portugal's a wonderful um, country. And Spain right next to it is terrific, too, you know. So is Philippines. Yeah, I went to Spain as well. It was amazing. Mm -hmm. Spain's yeah. terrific. I love Spain. Um, yeah. But no, we're getting... We Last night, uh, I woke up, I guess it had to be at three, 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, and the thunder was just amazing. I had I mean, the same thing. It was like I was in the middle of a horror film or something, you know, and oh, you know, Frankenstein was out there sticking the electricity to the monster I mean it was just incredible and Marjorie said it scared me and I said well it doesn't scare me what it does it, it makes me feel cozy because all this God is like using a bowling alley up there you know <laughs> uh, and yeah, and it's 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 terrible but you're inside and you're under the covers and it mm. can't hurt you you know? Yeah, but the locusts and the famine, that's coming next. Yeah, well, uh, do, you know, do you know that next in the next couple of days, it's supposed to wind up being, are you ready for this, in Death Valley? 130, right? I think 140, somebody wow. said. Wow. Oh, and if that's true, that will be the, high, high, uh, the hottest recorded temperature ever on planet Earth. I, I drove through there uh, to go to the Pahrump, Nevada, a couple of times, mm -hmm. and it is just beautiful that that Death Valley. Uh, there, there are these uh, like plateaus where the wind has just created these magnificent. Oh yeah, no, yeah, it's supposed to be wonderful, but uh, don't don't run out of gas. No, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it's a dry heat. Oh yeah, it's a dry heat at 140. <laughs> You know, your your the the <clears throat> bottoms of your shoes are going to stick to the pavement. All right. Yes, Ray. What's that in Celsius? I just wanted to tell. I've been <laughs> to Death Valley. Celsius. Ten percent off. I, I, I've been to Death Valley. 
several times. And yeah. one time I went and we took this dirt road uh, to the middle of nowhere in Death Valley. And there was about a three foot wide uh, pond. I guess it was a well. And it was like 110, 120. And there was the a duck oh, in the pond in the middle of Death Valley. It was so weird. Wow. Just swimming around in this little uh yeah, okay. hmm. in this little well. Have you ever been to the? You ever been to the Great Salt Lake? No. Yeah, that's yeah, I have. that's weird. That's that weird. That is weird. You, yep. you 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 know what you can do on the Great Salt Lake? You can walk Nothing. across it. Walk on. Oh water. yeah. Yeah, you can walk on water literally. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, it's uh, you know we have some. I'll tell you the thing that Americans don't do is they really don't travel around the United States much. Because there's some great places to go, you know. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful well, country. My are here. Hmm? Oops, my laundry's done. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my laundry. Yeah. What were you gonna you say? Hear that? Yeah. yeah. What did? What did you? What were you saying though? Well, my cousins are here, and they went to Sugar Creek um, yesterday, mm -hmm. and Hershey today. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so they're traveling around. They're from Nevada and Texas. Yeah. But I mean, there are some places in this country that I, when Shecky and I traveled across the United States, I mean, we went to Monument Valley, for instance, mm -hmm. which is just At Moab. I, what, why are you mentioning these all of a sudden? No, oh, Moab is Monument Valley. Isn't no, it's some, not. No, no. Monument Valley is Monument Valley. Oh, it's where John Ford did all his westerns. That and there was another place near it that he also did them as well. It's gorgeous, beautiful. It's just incredible. And that whole area, Bryce and Zion. And yeah, Monument we went. Valley. We went to Bryce and we went to Zion. Incredible. Yeah. Just yeah. incredible. Yeah. So. Yeah. Anybody here from Rob Alfano who's living in the Philippines? I haven't heard from him lately. Every now and then I'll reach out to him and he'll write me right back. Yeah, you know. I'll be in the Philippines August tenth, eleventh, and twelfth if he's around. You know, it sounds to me like you're almost like you're a, a a a comedian who's saying, "Well, and then I'll be in the Philippines from August fifteenth to August twenty seventh, <laughs> and then I'll be in, in Moab, Utah." You know, how many shows a day? I'll be in Tokyo. You're going to be in t Tokyo. Uh, but, and back in the Philippines in November. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you know. Um, yeah, we're planning on doing some vacationing, and I w I'd love to go back to China, but you just it's just you can't do it anymore. You know, I mean, you can do it, mm -hmm. but well, know. wear that shirt and that hat you got, and they'll they'll accept. Oh yeah, you. yeah, 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 they'll accept me. Um, I mean, I love China, boy. I mean, but just a beautiful country, and I just think it's a shame that what could be a real paradise, and I'm saying that. It, it has the possibilities of being a real paradise. It's being screwed up by the politics, you know? China is amazing. Yeah. It has some of the most beautiful land. Um, yeah. No, uh, it's, I, went, it. I went to Lu, uh, the uh, uh, Lee River. And, yeah. And, and, Gui Lin. And, and Gui Lin, yeah. Young and, Shao, all the way over there. Over and there. took uh, the river, uh, river boat down the river. And I mean, it's it's just you just sit there, you're gasping every minute of the trip. Just yeah, amazing. I did that. Just amazing. But anyway, yeah. so I mean, I just think that uh, Americans should do traveling. They would mm -hmm. have more of an appreciation for the way the rest of the world lives as well. You've been around, haven't you, Vernon? Or have you never left the the bluegrass uh, in Kentucky? I lived down on the Gulf Coast for three and a half years. That's where we adopted our daughter. Yeah, but have you been out of the uh, country at all? Not to live, no. Or to travel? Well, I've traveled. I've, I've done uh, Caribbean cruises and things like that. Yeah, but ha like, for instance, going to Europe or going to the My East. My wife has East. been to Europe, but I have not. Yeah, you really should, you know? I I think you, you'd, you'd, you'd be amazed by it, you know? Um, Even just go to Mexico and and make an effort to stay in a like a Airbnb like where people live, mm -hmm. uh, and it's and you'll just have a completely different view of the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, in fact, well, if you if you're going to be in uh, you're going to be in Malaysia, just drop by and see Bree. You know. Yeah. You, you you have an extra room, don't you? Well, we used to, but, um, <laughs> but the thing is, you can get very cheap accommodation in Malaysia. You can get a four-star hotel for fifty dollars a night. Really? If you if you want, yeah. If you want a two or three-star, twenty twenty-five dollars a night. Wow! Oh, oh there's a the boutique hooker. near me mm -hmm. that's about twenty twenty-five thirty dollars a night. Wow. You'd really like it. Wow. Okay. What he's telling me is, no, you can't stay with us. You got to get it. No, but you, <laughs> no, you can absolutely stay. Absolutely. <laughs> we have a sofa bed in the living room. I think we'll stay at the hotel. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we do have an extra room. That is my study. And we, yeah. we just put a bed in there. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So, so you are you working now, or it sounds like you're not working? You're doing a lot of traveling, or you have a, a hiatus, or what? No, I'm still working. Um, so, yeah, around eight or nine o'clock at night here, my emails start to get hot and heavy. Mm -hmm. um, of course, now it's Saturday there, so I don't. I'm not getting the emails, but um, I will start getting the emails. Um, Sunday night mm -hmm. at around nine because it will be Monday morning there. So yeah, I, yeah. So oh, I, I, yeah. everything can be done online nowadays. Most yeah, things. yeah, yeah. So okay. I thought you were teaching. Uh, yeah, I do. <clears throat> I do it online mainly, mm -hmm. <clears throat> just like during mm -hmm. COVID. So everybody's used to that, and I use the same Zoom. Uh, technology uh, primarily um, so yeah it's it's okay just the timing's a little strange mm -hmm. yeah yeah well you know so um, otherwise uh, let's see here anything happening in the news or anything let's ask Phil Phil is there anything you'd like to complain about uh, I didn't listen to the news today it's hot damn hot you know <laughs> that that's all I know yeah, well, I mean that's that's the news too. Is it? Oh uh, well, the Republicans are complaining that the cocaine investigation oh, was dropped too thing. soon. That, that it was only ten days, and it could have been anthrax. Well, maybe they would have done us a favor if it was anthrax. You know? Yeah. Uh, well, no, we would have gotten Kamala. So uh, I'm glad it was coke. Kamala. Well, no, I just yeah, it just bothers me. It just bothers me that that they made such a big deal out of this. I mean, come on. It was a little baggy like that of Coke, you know, you know, and, and it was nothing. Yeah. And yet it's like the Republicans are going, oh, this is a tragedy. You know, how can they get into the White House? You know, oh, it's <laughs> terrible. You don't. Yeah. You're going to tell me there's never been any cocaine in the White House? Are you oh, kidding me? I'm sure. Are you that, kidding yeah. me? And I, I'm it's not saying Cuba. I'm not saying under a Democratic, under a Republican too. You know, there's been uh, Cuban cigars in the White House, whether it was John F. Kennedy or Clinton. Yeah, yeah. What were you going to say, Bree? He had his hand up. Yeah, um, Alex. I'm, I'm feeling a little jet lag, so I'm going to probably okay. Uh, I'll listen in as I as I head to bed. Well, it was nice of you um, to join us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, I, there is one item that I wanted to get everyone's opinion on, and I mean, I I hope everyone will think that I you know am into the little green men. But a couple of weeks ago, News Nation was reporting on a fellow Pittsburgher mm -hmm. who was a whistleblower about uh, you know the UAPs and this or as um, we used to call them ufos right yeah and they say you know he says that we have craft and um you know barack obama has been on record as saying yes there are things that are up there we don't know what they are and uh it just seems like this doesn't get a lot of attention mm -hmm. um and you know uh, so I, I wondered what everybody thought about this like um what is going 
uh, with well, that. I, I think to begin with, UFOs are a product not only of our imagination, but of our um, uh, feeling that we're so important that people would want to come visit us. Okay, um, I think that uh, I, I like the, the the newer UA. What do they call them now? UA. UAP. UAP, UAP, which is stands for unidentified uh, aerial phenomena. Aerial phenomena. phenomena. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, you know, that, that, that's, that's good for calling it that. Uh, the reason why we've called them UFOs all these years is they've been some, something in the air that we saw, for whatever reason, that's unidentified. And as soon as it's identified, it's not unidentified anymore, you know. Um, for all that we've seen with UFOs over the years, how come we haven't, you know, when we went to the moon, how many Hasselblad cameras did we leave there and garbage and poop and everything else is probably sitting there on the surface of the moon? But somehow, these aliens are so pristine, they never leave anything behind. Clean people. Huh? They're clean well, people. They yeah. have. Huh? <laughs> they have? You say they have? They left Trump behind. What about the hieroglyphics yeah. uh, that they found in, in caves? Uh, you know that the, and there the, was a uh, a device they found in the Mediterranean that was an early, they say PC that that shouldn't have existed at that time. Now, where did you hear I, about I this? Though the question is, where did you hear okay. about this? Because News the Nation. What? Is News, News Nation, Nation a, a right wing? Uh, no, no, no. It's uh, it's it used to be called uh, uh, what WGN Cuomo. WGN I think, and they began was on there now. Yeah. What? What? Yeah, and Liz- Cuomo Liz- is Marcus. on there now. Yeah. Yeah. Bainbridge. I like it. I think it's a it's a good. Yeah, but just, you know, I I just don't. You know, I've always as long as I've been alive. First thing I heard in the fifties when I was a kid: UFOs, UFOs. Everybody went crazy about UFOs, and the fact of the matter is that. I don't think they amount to anything. They're just simply unidentified because we can't figure out what they are. And a lot of times they can but be... But what about the white tic-tac? The white tic-tac? Well, that's yeah. exactly what it was, a white tic-tac, and they're delicious. The Air Force just took pictures of it. You can see it on the on, on YouTube. Yeah, well... You know, I mean, I just, I've just been very, uh, you know, it's and bad. I'm somebody who would love to believe this stuff. I mean, you know how I, I'm very much into science fiction, and I'm very much into science fact, and space, and the moon, and, and Mars, and all of that. And yet, with all of that, I've never come to believe they're really UFOs. You know, I'm not saying there aren't people that are somewhere else in the uh, galaxy, or in the universe. But the question is why they came to see us. What's so interesting about us? And that's why I'm saying well, it's an ego trip when we think that these people are coming to see us. Well, I look at it this way, Alex, and that is to say, you know, we walk around every day and there are ants beneath our feet. And you and I don't look at that. However, there are people in, in schools and universities who are fascinated by ants and absolutely want to study them. So. I, I I think, you know. Well, I don't know how there, that, that there would be. Some. I don't know how that pertains to this, you know. I mean, what makes us so in, in interesting that people from another planet would want to come here and see us? And if they did want to see us, wouldn't they want to talk to some of us? Wouldn't they want to investigate Fast further? Food. They do. Oh, they Maybe do. They do. Oh, I've I mean, never been talked to by an alien. You know, uh, except possibly Phil, you know. Donald Trump. All right. Well, with that, I'm going to bid adieu. I wanted to check in. Well, great. Uh, great seeing you. Maybe again. I'll check in from Germany or Dubai Okay. Uh, on the next time. Great, Bree. Talk to you later. That's, nice to see you all. That's you. our friend Bree, ladies and gentlemen. But um, anybody have any comments about UFOs? I do. Yes. Um, th- this is kind of weird, but there's a theory, like with the ant thing that he brought up, mm-hmm. that, uh, you know, there are more than, possibly more than three dimensions, and, um, like, ants can't recognize us as 
beings other than some strange uh you know vision that they see some large thing moving around it could be the same for us that there's uh there are other dimensions and we only get you know but ants uh, live in this dimension you see i mean using that analogy is wrong because ants live in this dimension wait a minute, wait a minute let, let's talk to the uh Let's talk to the well, physicist. Well, we might live in the other dimension, too. Well, wait a minute. Let's talk to the physicist okay. in our crowd, Charlie Wallace. Charlie, your thoughts yeah. on UFOs? Oh, I, I think UFOs are actually phenomena that, that, phenomena that occur on Earth. They're from the Earth. You just don't know what they are. Yeah, and that's I'm why they're called sure. that. That's why they're unidentified, right? Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Do you think they get air miles with all of that flying around? Well, that's the other thing. That's the other thing is they would be light years away. I mean, if they, you know, they would have to have some way of traveling that we have no Look, idea. Look, I'm not going to say that there's not life in the rest of the universe. There definitely is. It's, yeah. It would be ridiculous to sit here and say it, there isn't life elsewhere. It may not be life like you and I. It might be plant life. Okay. It might be uh, a, a, a water Ooh, life. Any one of a number of things and not necessarily human beings walking around on two legs, okay? Mm -hmm. But we there is life on other planets, I'm sure of it. Uh, because the universe, how, how big is the universe, Charlie? What's the current uh, status on that? Oh, it changes so often, I don't know. The, the, well, it's expanding, it's still expanding, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it hadn't expanded that much in 73 years, so I don't... <laughs> as much as my waistline? Uh, yeah, <laughs> but, uh, uh, the, but the, I think it's something like it's supposed to be like forty billion light years across, or something like that. Yeah, we can't actually see the edge of the universe because it hasn't been enough time for it to travel to the Earth. What is beyond the universe? Do you figure? Well, same thing that's uh, between atoms. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah, no. it's empty space. So are we basically an atom? Well, no one knows. Mm. Yeah. Mm. See, I mean, I, yes, yes, Jeff. I, I've been looking a little bit through my wife about what's going in Mars. And there's some research that's going out in Mars. And they have some very small uh, instruments that are able to run around mm -hmm. and find out what, what it's like. Well, then we actually have a helicopter up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they—they're giving people, uh, people, the device is giving information all over the world, and I know, you know, they can communicate with the more Mars and mm -hmm. and ultimately uh, with us, but probably a bunch of other facilities that we can't easily communicate directly. But through these devices, it's easier for them. Mm -hmm. But is there life on Uranus? That's the question. No, there's life in my Uranus. <laughs> in my there's life in I, Uranus. There we go. Maybe I had a girlfriend like that Uranus. once. It's funny, we're talking about UFOs, and look, there's one out right outside Ray's window there. Oh, wait a minute. That's called the moon, I guess. I saw that. No, that's not. There's nothing there. Oh, there, no, there's nothing there. That's it's the a ceiling light like reflecting out. off his window. Oh, geez. <laughs> that's right. That's what it is. Yeah, but um, you know, I mean, I uh, the the, the uh, thing with Mars is that there's there is nothing. There is no life on Mars. It's a dead planet. It, it had life at one time. It had rivers, it had lakes, and it may have even had uh, life uh, there. But today, there's not a lot of life there. Uh, nothing that we can uh, uh, say is life. Uh, yeah, there, it used it, to have a thicker atmosphere, too. Now it's just so thin. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's a planet that at one time was a, uh, a, a living, breathing planet. And what was I told, the reason why it died but we don't die has something to do with the, uh, with the stratosphere or something keeping the atmosphere in the planet. Am I right about that? What, what am I thinking of there, Charlie? 
Oh, um, the reason why they lost their their atmosphere, they lost their life there, and whatever. Well, a lot of the uh, solar wind effect. That was it. Affect us because of uh, because of the uh, ozone layer and the stratosphere and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And and Mars doesn't have an ozone layer. Right. And uh, and that was no, the why? Because they were using all those sprays and aerosols. And yeah, that's what did it. <clears throat> yeah, uh, and they were trying to kill all the bugs. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're trying to kill all the bugs. But no, I think that, that, that you know it, it. It's a. It's a. What happened? What happened to? Uh, what happened to Tony? He just disappeared, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was abducted. Yes, he, that's exactly oh, what I was it. thinking. <laughs> or anal probing him. He's right. getting he's probed anally. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? Why is like, it the aliens? They must be gay aliens, okay? Because every time anybody talks about being abducted by aliens, they got yeah. anally probed. Now, what, what, what is the fascination with human anuses that these aliens have? What, what if you just claim to be an alien? Because they have Klingons. <laughs> There is a joke yeah, there. I mean, I, 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 you're, you're almost on the edge of a joke there. It didn't quite <laughs> land, but you were on the edge of it. It was pretty good. They're a lot too. better than Phil's jokes. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> He's a professional. It's not yeah. fair. <laughs> but there's just something about these orifices that, that just fascinate people. So <laughs> Fascinate aliens. No, they don't fascinate people. They fascinate aliens. Yeah, well, <laughs> we're interpreting what the aliens are. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And I, and Although I'm they sh- do fascinate people. I'm sure that if aliens were going to come here, they would certainly make their presence better known. You know, I yeah. mean, it, if they are anything like we are, they have scientists and they are explorers, and that's why they found our planet, and then they came here wouldn't they want to find out more about it? Yeah. And we have no example of that ever happening. You know. So. Yeah. But. Uh, Bummer. Yeah. Yeah. It would be cool if there was aliens. Yeah. Wouldn't uh, it? Well, yeah, I was, as long as they were nice. As long as they were nice aliens. Well, I, w- I would like to be. Show. I would like to be president of the United States for only one reason. And that's because I can then find out what all the secrets are. That's what Trump yeah, knows. Area 51. They wouldn't let him keep them. Uh, well, they, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they were careful about what they told Trump. They were afraid of telling him everything because they were afraid he would <laughs> spring his yap. And he did. I heard that. He, he keep did. Quiet. Huh? The Trump cannot keep his mouth shut. No. He couldn't keep his mouth shut. I mean, do you really trust a guy, Phil? who can't keep a secret and is president of the United States. I mean, do you feel yes. safe think with there that? there should be secrets. What? I don't think he thought there should be secrets. That uh, he wanted to be transparent. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I that's, that, that's funny. Like the stealth fire plane, right? Hey, you know, was, I want to know if, if he were transparent. If he were, I want to know who killed Kennedy. You know, at least in my lifetime, I'd like to know. It was Biden. It was Hunter Biden yeah. killed well, you know, Kennedy. They, probably. But, you know, they, they told us that uh, 50 years after the, uh, the his death that they were going to open That's up. That's not what they said. Time. That's not what mm-hmm. they said. No. What, what was it? The They said that uh, 50 years after the last person died who yeah. was around at the time of the families, of the families. They would then yep. reveal it, but it well, was a matter of protecting. It was a matter of protecting families, like the yep. Kennedy family, and so on and so forth. Well, uh, of the immediate family, uh, the only one left is Carolyn, right? Caroline. And is she still alive? Yeah, I guess yeah. She's Caroline still alive. is. Yes. And, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, like there's so many brothers and nieces and nephews. Well, and when the know. last one goes, when Caroline goes, or whatever. Count fifty years and then they'll release it all. Those huh. candies are very prolific. I yeah. still the cigarette say, smoking man killed Kennedy. Th- I saw it. Well, no. If you ah. really, it, you know, my theory and the one that I believe in, I think it was the mob. I think it was definitely the mob. Oh, I think so. yeah, the mob. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, think it was mob. Lee Harvey Oswald. And I and, and I think mob. reading one of the reasons why we were never told that 
is because America doesn't want to feel that there, our president died as a result of a mob hit. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there was a lot of there were a lot of mobsters who hated Kennedy. I heard yeah, especially so because they were pissed at Robert. So yeah, Robert, at Robert Kennedy. Yeah, yeah I, I yeah. what I heard was that it was the CIA and nah. that they were pissed because he didn't back the uh, Bay of Pigs uh, 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 Cuba invasion. Uh, and uh, I think it was Robert Kennedy that alluded to that, uh, the, the guy that's well, running. Robert Kennedy was the person they couldn't stand because you well, got to realize Kennedy, the mob did help well, Kennedy get elected. Yeah, no, no, not Kennedy's brother. Uh, 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 Junior. No, Junior. Phil, J Robert Kennedy Jr. is claiming that the CIA killed his father. Uh, that's what he claims. I just uh, heard him talk about it yesterday. Yeah. Okay. Was that yeah. the Piers Morgan interview, or uh, I heard him? I heard him on Piers Morgan. Well, uh, who, and I also who is this? Wait a minute. Who, 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 is, who is this? RFK Jr. The guy. RFK running Jr. For president. Oh, that that nut case. Yeah. He claim he claims for sure, and I don't believe him, but he claims for sure that the CIA the CIA killed his father, not Sirhan Sirhan. No, I think uh, I think it was a mob. I think it was. Uh, uh, Sam, uh, it, it was this. It was it, it was this guy. I'm trying to remember this guy who. It, what happened was, Robert Kennedy had this mobster kidnapped and taken to South America and dropped off in the middle of a jungle. And, <laughs> and it was this guy who then came back, or at least got within reach of the United States, and then called the hit on Kennedy. And it Wait, was you're talking and, about and, John Kennedy. Uh, no, Robert up, uh, Kennedy. Oh, oh okay. But they wanted to kill John Kennedy because, as they felt, if you if you cut the head off the uh, of the snake, the rest of the body can't work, right? So that to get to to Robert Kennedy, you did that, and I think Robert Kennedy later was also killed as a result of the mob, uh, because what happened was um, uh, Joe Kennedy uh, had an alliance with the mob. Uh, who helped him get helped him helped him get his son elected, and when that happened, they felt okay. We got an in in the White House. You know, we can have the next four years doing whatever we want to do. And instead, Robert Kennedy decided to go after them, and this pissed them off. And that's why I think that you know there was there was a motivation for the mob to kill off Robert. Uh, John no Kennedy, Kennedy was a bootlegger. You disagree, Vernon? Does this all make sense to you? It makes sense to me. Okay. Mm -hmm. it, yes. Alan. So so <clears throat> Joe Kennedy went to Sam Giancana, uh, the head of the I Illinois mob or mm -hmm. whatever at the mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And and asked him to you know help get his son elected and usually when you ask the mob to do something they expect a favor in return <laughs> and the favor that, do that for him. the favor that the president gave him was robert kennedy and that was bad so and i think that i think that sam giacana probably ordered the hit uh no probably not giacana not Sam. Sam Wasn't Giancana. it Giancana's girlfriend that uh, Kennedy was banging? Yeah. yeah. Well, Kennedy was banging her, and and Giancana. Marilyn Monroe. Oh no, no. somebody else. Uh, Judith uh, X. Uh, Judith uh, Exner. 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 Yeah. Right. Right. Uh, he was also he was also banging. Uh, uh, what did you say? What was the the actress? He was banging was everybody. I know. Well, yes. Uh, would yeah. you bang well, I, Marilyn Monroe if you could? I just have a quick question. I was well, just I talk, I talked to I talked to excuse me. I, I talked to a uh, a stripper by the name of Blaze Star, who was having sex with Kennedy, and she told me that they always had it standing up in a closet because he couldn't do it lying down because he had a bad back. But the back, yeah. Yeah, yes, uh, 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 Ray. Ray. <laughs> Ray. Frozen. Froze. Frozen. Aliens. I'm frozen. No, not you're not frozen. Now you're okay. Oh, 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 okay. Now you're. Okay. I just had a question. Do you th so? Do you think that Oswald was a patsy and that he had nothing to do with it? Um, probably set up to to do the yeah. hit too. I think he was a patsy. Yeah. I think he. I think he was a okay. patsy, but I. I think he was a willing patsy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and Jack okay. Ruby had 
Jack Ruby had mob connections, mm-hmm. nightclub yeah. owner, mm-hmm. and the, the mob said, go silence him. Yeah. And he didn't okay. have long and, to live. Jack Ruby. And then my second, my second question is, so Robert Kennedy, do you believe that Sirhan Sirhan had anything to do with that? Yes. Right. He pulled the trigger. Yeah, we, he was on film. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just want. I just want to now, see what you thought. So, now, Robert Jr. said that there were multiple guns that. Uh, and, Why are you and quoting Robert bullets. Jr.? That guy is. Well, because a, he's a you he's, know, he's an interesting it, guy. No, and he's not. A, he's, what is he interesting I, about? He would know more he's about a moron. his father's. He's he a moron. More, wait a minute, Alex. He's he a moron. His father's he's a, no, assassination. His father. Is, we would. He would know more about it. Do you think so? Yeah, yeah I think so. Um. You know, especially then why his, is he speculating on stuff rather than saying this oh, is it, true? Some of the things he's not speculating on, he said uh, as a fact that there were five different guns that were discharged when his father was yeah. assassinated, and they found uh, uh, bullet casings from five different guns. We, th- he says that we don't know that that's true. No, we, we don't. But I heard him say uh, that. But I we think don't that just because he, he says it doesn't mean it's true, Phil. Well, he, he, I don't remember hearing that he was there when Robert Kennedy, when his dad got he wasn't. Shot. He he got information uh, because he's, how come there was only one little boy in Robert Kennedy's. Yeah, well, that's he, precisely he, it, Phil. He got information. Yes, but he's yeah. dedicated um, a major part of his life to learning what happened to his father. Why? Yeah, but he also believes that vaccines kill kids, yeah. and uh, uh, no, I, 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 I think that's blown out of proportion. Uh, but he he says it's blown out of proportion. Why, but why he do you defend it. scumbags? Like, why do right, you defend right now, scumbags? He's trying, well, he's, he's a democratic right scumbag. Yeah. You know, I, I I like a democrat. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. No. Don't we hear the music now that uh, Phil's done? But I like the Andrew. No, Yang I got a minute yet. I liked Andrew Yang, and I, I kind of like Robert Kennedy Jr. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, That's he's Kennedy a Jr. Job. is scary because he sounds really smart, and he has all of these ideas with no backing, really. He yeah, states he, stuff that are, are as fact when they're not. He's, he's, he's a really fact. scary dude. I know, but he does sound smart, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. Well, so does DeSantis until he opens his mouth. By the way, I have, suddenly I have a prediction. It came to me today. And it's too late for Phil to start talking about it because we're going to play the theme in 45 seconds. Yeah. I think Biden's going to beat the pants off of anybody that runs against him. Mm-hmm. That's my prediction. Come back again in like a year and a half and prove me wrong. Yeah, know? we'll see. Yeah. I don't think so. What? I don't think he's of course run. you don't think so. I think that I, I give it a 40% chance he doesn't run. You don't think he's going to run? He already, huh? Interesting. I don't think he's going to run. Running. He's already you know, running. Why, what do you base that, that on? Look, if he said he's not going to run, Robert he's Kennedy Jr. lame duck. If, yeah, if but what, what? You know, he doesn't want to be a lame duck, so he says he's running. Yeah, but, but what are you base on? What are you basing your idea that he's not going to run on? He said he's going to run. I, I think he's he's cognitively challenged. He's just too old. But and Trump is three Donald years Trump, younger. Donald Trump I don't, is I don't think that Trump can handle the job. I think I don't think he's. Oh, co- okay. Let me just say this, Phil. He's not cognitively challenged. I think he appears to be because he's he's old. Also because he was a stutterer all his life, and that's mm-hmm. what you seem to think is an inability to think straight or whatever. He's he's fine. He's absolutely fine. And you watch. He will. He'll win because who you got? You got DeSantis and you got Trump. Oh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, listen, like, that's it. The theme is it. running, and I got to say goodbye to everybody. Yeah. Thank you, Ray, for Have joining us week, tonight. Yeah. And I love seeing that flying saucer outside your window, <laughs> a UFO. And also, <laughs> thank you to, to that burning orb to Alan. Mm-hmm. And Vernon, nice seeing you again. Always nice seeing you. Uh, Charlie, au revoir. See you next week. Probably see mm-hmm. you on Monday. Uh, uh, Phil. Have a nice weekend. We Thank won't you. see you on Monday. It wasn't nice. And uh, of course, Jeff, always good to see you too. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you, okay? There they go, folks. That's our citizens panel for tonight. Yeah, there they go. I'm Alex Bennett, and that's it for tonight. Jack Bishop is next with the intersection. He'll be here using Skype. 
and you can call them at GabNet Live. GabNet Live on Skype. I'll see you again on Monday uh, for the pop-up show. That'll be on Facebook at 4 o'clock. And, and then uh, next Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.